There are about 6,400 mammals in the world, and 437 of them are in India. And you know what? About 11 to 12 percent of all these mammals in India are endemic to India. Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode of Epic Mammals of India. We are looking at smaller carnivores and mammals across India and talking a bit about where you can find them and a little bit about their uh, natural history. So uh, today's epic mammal is a really cool animal. It's a mongoose and uh, it is quite rare to come by and it's also very colorful. This dude here with a very funky hashtag, that's striped neck mongoose. And this mongoose is the largest mongoose species in Asia. And that's the epic animal we are going to look at today. So I live in Chennai and my window overlooks a small scrub patch. And one of my favorite pastimes is to take a cup of chai and uh, look at the window for these little mongoose family to come and show up. And they are absolutely cool animals. And uh, the way they you know, groom each other, they go digging, fighting, playing, and sometimes they just, they just sleep off during daytime without completely knowing that this forest patch could be taken by a builder any day and made it to an apartment. So that's it. Irrespective of where you live, uh, a village, forest, um, you know, buffer of forest or a city, wherever you live, you would have al always come across mongoose at least once in your life. But the whole of India, right from uh, you know, Kanyakumari to Himalayas, there are a lot of mongoose species. And there are about 34 species of mongoose in the world, and India has about seven of them. And the Western Heart God's Belt has about four of them. So let's quickly look at uh, these different mongoose species so we get a little bit of idea about them. So the most common one, let's start with that, uh, which is Indian grey mongoose. Uh, that's a common one you see. It's there right from Kanakuri all the way to uh, lower Himalayas. And then comes the ruddy mongoose, which is there across peninsular India, goes all the way up to Delhi. And then we have the small Indian mongoose, which is seen across uh, northern plains. And then we have the crab eating mongoose, which is a special speciality northeast um, animal. And then we have our brown mongoose, which is uh, which is quite special for Western Ghats, endemic, and possibly this is the rarest uh, mongoose in India. And then comes our striped neck mongoose, which is the largest in India. They are the largest in Asia. And this is known to occur across uh, Western Ghats. But there are some interesting findings about the distribution, which we will look at in the next couple of minutes. Now, let's take a closer look of this interesting animal. Uh, as I said, this is the largest mongoose in Asia. It has really stout legs. And if you see during a safari, it is quite distinct. It's not like a regular, uh, you know, uh, elongated version of a rodent, but uh, you, you can see it as an animal. And uh, the unique identity is there in the name. It's it's a striped neck mongoose, so it's got a very unique scar-like stripe that goes uh, across its neck uh, right from behind its ear. And uh, looking at the size, uh, this animal weighs about 3.5 kilograms, and it's uh, head to a body uh, length is about 53 centimeters and the tail is about 32 centimeters. But unlike your boring neighborhood gray uh, mongoose, the unique fact about this animal is the brilliant reddish tone that it has. Uh, they also come in interesting color combinations. They are not just plain red or plain gray. So you have, you know, some of them starting from fully gray and then uh, some of them half gray and then you also have the fully red or fully orange ones. What is more interesting is that this change occurs gradually across Western Ghats when you come down from Karnataka. So the, the Sakleshpur and all those northern Karnataka belt, belt will have a sort of a fully grey tone and as you come down Kabini and uh, you know uh, Nagarhole and all these belt has a mix of the intermediate tone and when you come to Ambalais you have something like this which is which is fully red and absolutely uh, stunning. This aspect of varying colors and this interesting uh, brick red color in animal eyes is uh, just too special and especially in uh, Valpare. So in fact this animal is split into two subspecies based on this observation. So the fully gray ones in uh, northern Karnataka is segmented into a subspecies called uh, Herpestus veticolis inornata. And the southern ones with partial colors and fully red colors 
So they come under the subspecies called Hepestus viticolis viticolis. Uh, but even in animalized, or even if you go below animalized to Pepara or, or any of the southern uh, Western Ghats animals, you still see a lot of intermediate uh, you know, colored ones. Which they are one of these quintessential Western Ghats animals, uh, like the brown mongoose or the Nilgiri martin. So these were known to be one of them for hundreds of years, but then gradually, recently, their extent was taken up beyond uh, Karnataka to, uh, to Mahabaleshwar and parts of Maharashtra. So in 1911, someone called Allen noted a sighting of this animal in Horsley Hills in Andhra Pradesh. Well, uh, that is clearly Eastern Ghats. But his sighting was not accounted because um, clearly he didn't have a specimen. Uh, so it was just a hearsay record which uh, was not made official. Right now, uh, after 105 years, in 2014, uh, there were records of these animals camera trapped in Simlipur, which is Orissa northern part of Eastern Ghats and then uh, there were more records in Papikonda which is again in Andhra Pradesh, uh, Eastern Ghats. So this animal has still moved from a classic Western Ghats species to an animal which is Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. So earlier it is known, it was believed that the altitude they prefer were from 400 meters to about 1400 meters but then things completely changed. They were seen very often in higher altitudes. They are also seen very often in lower altitudes. So uh, right now we cannot put an altitude range of their preference because we don't have a lot of information about them. But they are absolutely seen anywhere. You see forests like Bandipur and Kabini, they are there. You see the grasslands in uh, Nilgiris and uh, Animalai, uh, uh, places like Taishole. They are found almost everywhere across the Western Ghats belt. Uh, starting from, I think, Mahabaleshwar and going all the way down to uh, Pepara and Kanakimari Wildlife Sanctuary. What do these animals eat? Uh, they are known to actively hunt, uh, you know, smaller animals like uh, like the mouse deer or uh, sometimes jungle fowl, black tape hare. They are kind of opportunity feeders. They feed at bugs and grubs in some cases. There are records of them scavenging. Uh, so I think uh, they are open to any cuisine. So, where can you go and see or photograph this beautiful animal? And Valpare has a lot of sightings of these uh, fully red specimen. And uh, there is also an interesting orange specimen, which is an aberrant version in uh, Valpare. I'm not sure if it's still around. Even the other intermediate colored ones you see in Kabini or uh, Nagarpale is absolutely stunning. And this animal is also a very crucial link in the food chain between larger uh, predators and these uh, much smaller animals like insects and uh, uh, smaller birds, reptiles and animals like mouse deer. So what is threatening their survival? Uh, they are quite rare, so that's an advantage. You cannot just go to the forest and look for them and kill them. If you take all of the mongooses, one of the main threats they, they face is the, the mongoose hair brushes. If we look at the number of mongooses killed, to get one kilogram of mongoose hair, about 50 mongooses are killed. And another sad fact is that uh, a lot of these mongooses are killed at roadkill. So these are some of the uh, major threats that are looming around this animal. Uh, by the ratings, they are still uh, at least concerned because they are not very habitat center, they can adapt and survive at multiple habitats. So this is about this interesting animal today. Uh, I would encourage all of you to probably Google or look at uh, pictures of these and possibly look at places where you can go see them next. Uh, and do click pictures of these smaller carnivores and um, you know smaller animals as well. Uh, stop them and uh, stop for them in safaris. Uh, some of your records could be some very interesting findings and that could be some critical piece in uh, understanding about their uh, natural history. And also note that a lot of the properties and wildlife uh, tourism places are opening, especially in Karnataka. Uh, if you have uh, free time, uh, do visit them. Tourism industry is a really big industry and wildlife tourism is a very, very crucial pillar and part and parcel of the entire con uh, conservation process. So, um, if you have the means and ways, uh, do visit uh, wildlife places and support this industry as well. Uh, 
So that is from me signing off and let's uh, meet again in the next episode with a very, very interesting angle. I'm already excited about this angle. And uh, do leave your comments uh, in this post on any of the interesting sightings that you have about these animals. And if you want me to talk about any of the other animals, uh, you know, uh, smaller carnivores or smaller mammals preferably, just leave a comment other than bats. And uh, last week we looked at Nilgri Martens and you will see the link here, you can click watch. Uh, that's it and you all stay safe from Corona, be safe, take care.